Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, meanwhile, the New York Times has detailed a campaign by Saudi Arabia to identify and silence dissidents online. Sarah Khairat explains. Saudi Arabia has long been accused of using social media to quash dissent and keep tabs on anyone critical of its leadership. And the latest allegation in the New York Times is about a Saudi national who was quietly sacked by Twitter in 2015 on suspicion of spying for his country. This is the man said to be at the centre of that allegation, Ali Al Zabara. He joined Twitter in 2013 and became the first Saudi national to work there. Now, the New York Times reports he had access to personal information and account activity of some of Twitter's users, including phone numbers and IP addresses. But that all ended in December of 2015, when intelligence services alerted Twitter and warned the Saudi leadership had been effectively grooming Zabara to spy on Saudi critics and dissidents online. He's said to be back in Saudi Arabia, though, where he now works for the government. Now, the New York Times says Twitter hasn't confirmed the report, but its information comes from five different sources. The revelation is part of wider reporting on Saudi Arabia's alleged attempt to shape the online narrative after Khashoggi's killing. Twitter has taken steps in recent days to shut down spam bots that have been pushing a pro-Saudi agenda. And the New York Times reports those efforts to sway public opinion include a so-called troll farm based in Riyadh. And also details how the kingdom hired the consulting firm McKinsey & Co to track social media responses to its economic reforms. But three accounts flagged by McKinsey as being anti-reform were targeted and led to imprisonment. Now, McKinsey, for its part, released this statement in the last few hours, saying, we were never commissioned by the authority in Saudi Arabia to prepare a report of any kind or in any form to identify critics. And in our work with governments, McKinsey has not and never would engage in any work that seeks to target individuals based on their views. The other thing is key members of Saudi royalty that we have to remember have been taking to Twitter and Facebook accounts to drive for their reforms across the kingdom. Social media has now become integral for its 2030 vision plan. Well, Mark Owen Jones researches bots and social media campaigns in the Middle East at Hamad bin Khalifa University. He says Twitter bots are playing a major role in the spread of information from Saudi Arabia. I would say in the Gulf, this is endemic. So I've been looking at bots, for example, for about two years. Um, and what I've seen, for example, in the past four months alone, that if you look for any mention of the word Saudi in Arabic, uh, up to 80% of all tweets that mention the word Saudi Arabia are produced by bots, um, which is a huge number. We're talking millions and millions of tweets over time. So it's a scourge. And um, as far as I'm concerned, Twitter aren't doing enough to stop this. The reason um, trolls are hard to crack down on, because essentially they are real people. So uh, they are real people who are operating Twitter accounts just uh, like anyone else, except they have an agenda. And they are usually paid to either put forward a certain narrative or to intimidate other people. Now, because they look like real people, it's hard to identify. Bots are different because they're software programs. And usually they're automated, so there are patterns in their behavior which Twitter's algorithms can pick up on. What I think Twitter needs to do in places like Saudi Arabia is change their due diligence on human rights. They should think twice about operating in a country with a poor human rights record that has a record of silencing dissidents and censoring them. I do not think uh, social media or any Twitter or uh, social media platform can be a platform for free speech if it operates in such an environment. And Twitter need to actually think about that more seriously. Still ahead on the Al Jazeera News.